right? So let's go through and start kind of finishing out this thing, uh, getting prepared. I'll show the cover so we can see what's going on. And I've got holes all over this place. I'm going to use the lid tool. And that's going to get us most of the way there. And lid tools, you know, for some assemblies, for some models, that's all you need is a few lids. Um, and the lid tool is really easy to do. You just uh, click a flat face and it creates a solid body. Uh, I'm going to grab the outside face here. And then I'm going to grab the inside face over here. And I want to do that just to show you what's going on and make you aware that you really do have to pay close attention to some of the details. So I'm going to click OK. I could have set a manual thickness here, but I just went ahead and left it as the default because it'll usually do a pretty good job of, of picking a thickness. You want your lids to be about as thick as the rest of the geometry around it. Um, that's just kind of a, a general rule of thumb. But it's going to build that geometry and drop all those things into place. Now, because it's creating one lid per opening, what I'm going to be able to do is come in here and select boundary conditions and measure flow through each of these lids individually. Uh, a lot of times I'll actually create dummy bodies like these lids interior to something. Like, for example, in between two valves in a channel, in a system. In between those two valves, I want another pressure drop in the intermediate area. Create a lid there, exclude it, and then you have now somewhere to define a condition or to measure something. But the specific thing I want to show you is, because this is a thin wall, and because I use the lid tool, we have some consequences that we have to at least understand, if not sort of deal with. This first one, I picked the outside face, and what it did is it did an offset entities to the outside, made it a little bigger, and then extruded it down through, so it created an interference. That's okay, I'm not doing any uh, conduction on this lid, so that's not gonna create any problems there. Uh, but it did poke through the other side. And so now I have multiple faces that are gonna be considered boundary conditions. Whereas on the other side, I grabbed uh, the inside face. And so now that's a lot simpler. Uh, if you ever see a face that's sort of halfway in, halfway out, don't worry. Anything on the outside is just going to get ignored. You're just worrying about what's on the inside that's touching the fluid. Right? That's where those errors about not on the fluid uh, uh, solid boundary comes from. All right, so I don't love these lids here. These lids right here, these first, uh, what is it, eight lids? And so what I'm going to do is just delete those because they're, they're honestly, they're, they're poking through and not exactly giving me what I would like to have. And so I'm going to come in and try something else. Here's another method you could use to close these in. You could just take anything, any part, like this front panel, just grab it, made it into place, and there you go, we've got a lid. Now, is this a good lid? Sure, sort of. A um, couple problems with it. I only have one face, so I, it's easier to define where the lid uh, boundary condition is, but I can't individually specify or measure flow through each of the individual lids because it's one big lid. So that's some pluses and minuses. The biggest problem I see with this guy is that it's going to make my domain much bigger than it needs to be. So it's definitely not what I want. It does not matter what you use to close those pieces. As long as you close them, you're going to be good to go. So I'll finish this one out. Uh, just select the inside. Uh, but we already know this is not going to be the end of it. We already know that these slots are not enough to close this volume in. We've got knockout holes down here. We've got screw holes where the screws got removed. Uh, we've got uh, you know slots in the sheet metal, all kinds of stuff that we need to fill in.